All right, hello everyone. And uh, yeah, Paul Tranny here. Uh, hopefully this audio is okay and it's good to have you here. So uh, we're going to get this party started. Um, and uh, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, all right, fantastic. Thank you for joining me on Facebook as well. Leonardo, we're going to go ahead and get started. I think this is going to be really fun, and uh, it's going to be awesome. So uh, hopefully the audio is okay, and uh, I'm using my inside voice, and this should be pretty fun. So I'm looking forward to this, everyone. Um, in fact, let me show you some of this fantastic work I have going on in a second. There we go. Let me share my screen. Paul Tranny here, going to type in to dive into uh, sort of combining text with images. So this is the most widely used, the most used tool in Photoshop, by the way. Sure, the selection tool, but uh, really the most used, one of the most used tools is the, is the text tool. So I'm going to talk about combining text with images, as you can see right here, sort of with this, as you can see, right? So this is the idea, right? Integrating that in. Uh, this text right in here in this scene, right? Getting into maybe even some 3D as well. This is actually 3D text. So hopefully that works for you. Rocky's in the house. What's up, bud? You know what's up. Oh, that's my goal. My goal is always to like teach somebody like Rocky uh, something new is the plan. Okay, and this one gets very text heavy. But you get the idea. I'm just going to pick an image and I'm going to dive into this. Let's pick something fun since I'm all about vacations. Hmm. Let's dive into some of this. In fact, we can even take a look at this image right here. That one or this one. Both of these are very nice. So let's also have this one. All right. So, uh, oh, Michelle from Sardinia. Good to have you here. Uh, welcome. I want to go to Sardinia. I wish I had a, an image of Sardinia, but instead I have a picture of Bolivia. Bolivia. So all I'm doing is I'm typing in text using the text tool. We get the properties for it right over here in the properties panel, as we'd expect. Um, I'm just using Helvetica New. I can uh, just kind of roll over any any numerical field. If you roll over the icon, you can scrub down and shrink the text down. So that's typically what I do is I kind of scrub down like that and maybe rest that right there, okay? Which is fantastic, okay? So we want to integrate text with images. Uh, most popular way, as Rocky knows, is uh, what if I wanted to potentially, maybe, let's go with white. Uh, what if I want to put the picture of of this text, excuse me, this background, uh, a pic picture of this background inside of this text. So I'm gonna put that text in there. So what do I do? I have this picture, this photo, take that. Um, a couple different ways to do this. Some people will select it, and this is how you used to do things, right? You would create this selection, right? And then you would go to that uh, photo layer and then add a layer mask, okay? Adding a layer mask is right down here, right? Click and we get this. Looks great, what's the problem with that? Steve probably knows from Wellington, New Zealand. Good day. Oh, New Zealand's one of those places I wanna go. Belgium in the house, I love Belgium as well, but who doesn't? Uh... Yeah, uh, fantastic. Hello, Christine, Christine as well. So the problem with this is that what if I misspelled Bolivia? Good chance I would. Um, so uh, what I want to do there is change it. There we go. Boop. Cool. Uh, so I wouldn't want to do this. I'll undo this. I'll get rid of that selection. I would want to make a, and I'll even make this larger, uh, the clipping mask. It's right over here. We have this text, put the text beneath the photo and then right click, we create a clipping mask. So the top photo is gonna clip, be clipped by the text. Boom, there it is. Same result, the issue is, it is edit, editable, right? 
All right, so that's what we want. Boom, boom. Let me make something cool for Rocky, uh, if you don't mind. Um, thank you, Steve, for joining me. Uh, Facebook's been tricky with videos. Who knows? So this looks pretty cool. Let's kind of take this to the next level because I think it'd be cool in terms of like just a cool stylistic thing to do is do some offsets. So I, I can actually do a couple different things. I could do some offsets. I can do some brightness and contrast, like kind of take the brightness down to bring that out, right? Or what I can do is I can do some offsets and I usually take that photo and I'll shift it a little bit. See how that text looks a little bit different? We can shift it down just like that. We can add another layer with a clipping mask. And on this new layer, I can use B for brush and come in here, turn off caps lock, you know, add a highlight like that, right? This already looks pretty good. Another thing I could do is take this photo and this is what I will do as well. Whether it's text or images, let's do this Rocky. It's these little things Rocky that I think make it look awesome. Let's take this down to zero. Create this cool hipster triangle, right? Same thing, taking that photo, placing it inside of that shape using a clipping mask and maybe taking that photo as well and flipping vertically and maybe adjusting accordingly. Something kind of like that. Let's actually flip horizontal as well. So now we have pretty much every hipster design out there, right? This is so hipster, but it's really cool looking, okay? Uh, I'm gonna do one more thing really fast because this design's begging for it. Uh, we wanna cut out this, uh, this flamingo down here. In fact, I'm gonna try this really fast to see what select subject does. Sometimes I'll use select subject just to see what happens and it does. It actually does select this bird uh, for the most part minus a couple things. So I will remove that part. All I really need is the head of this bird. Give me one second. Look at that, that does a pretty good job. Selecting that, making a uh, layer mask. And now we have the bird. Do you guys like that? See what I did there? I put the bird in front of, this flamingo in front of that shape, which looks pretty awesome. Or I can turn on uh, these words here. And now we have another just cool design for Bolivia in this case, right? Easy enough using text. I'm gonna get in some more things. Hello, Serena from Italy. And again, I can turn that off like that. Oh uh, yeah. There we go. So as I move this text around, you can see that it's in front of that, that bird. All right, easy enough. Bolivia, let's move on. Um, Again, it's all about sort of finding your text. And a lot of times that's what I'll use is I'll take this text and it'll be set to um, just white. Okay, so I could do the same thing, but here's another case where I wanna integrate it with the photo. So I'm gonna do that again. With the select subject means using, selecting a tool and then going up to here to select subject, or you can go up to here uh, to select, wait for it, sorry about that, select subject. Okay, you ready for this, Serena? Selecting subject, it'll go through. No hands mode, it actually selects those subjects there. And what do I do? All I need to do is do a, a select and mask if I want to, but really I just duplicate the layer, add a layer mask. See, you can see they're cut out, right? What do we do now? We create a layer sandwich. Boop, boop, like that. There we go, we have our layer sandwich and that text in there, like so. A Couple other things we could do with this, by the way. I can change this blend mode to anything else I want. I think overlay looks pretty nice since I have this fat text. Another thing we do is we just stay this with, keep this uh, uh, as normal. I'll duplicate this layer, the second one is gonna be 
flipped vertically, move down, change in the color of it, right? All my properties for my text will be in the properties panel. We keep advancing all that, everything in there. And let's go ahead and do an edit, transform. Uh, let's try this warp. Or not. So this is what I typically have to do. In some cases, you might need to rasterize the type in order to do a distort with the text, okay? Um, another thing I might have been able to do is convert that to a uh, smart object. But basically, I'm gonna try to make this shadow match these characters kicking the ball, something like that, boom. Right, what do we do? Add a layer mask. Let me know if you have questions, by the way. Serena from Italy or anyone else. Um, but I can try some different blend modes, maybe. Maybe? Mm, we'll keep it at normal. Maybe we'll eliminate. Since I'm going to integrate this, you ready for this, Valder? From Brazil in the house. Um, I'm going to convert this to a smart object. I'm going to go to filter. I'm going to go into uh, blur gallery. I'm going to do a tilt shift blur on that shadow. So look at this. Move this down because what happens with shadows? They get blurrier the further away they get from the center. So I'll move that in. It's going to be the sharpest right here and then it's going to blur out. Okay. And that's what that tilt shift blur does. Um, I can crank up the blurriness if I want to, but again, I want to kind of make it match like that. Clicking OK. Great thing is this is a smart object. So look right over here. Thank you very much. Smart object. Blur gallery. Good. Good. Um, obviously, I need to add a layer mask. Hit B for brush. Start painting with white taking that flow down and I'll just start clicking around kind of painting that so it should be lighter the further it is away from this this part right here so hopefully that makes sense a um, couple other things I could do I could actually go in here I can go into filter I would go into distort and maybe do a zigzag no Filter, distort, wave. So this is going to get a little tricky, but you can see right in here, I can really start distorting this text. Right now, number of generators, if I take that down, see how it's going to make it a little like, a little wobbly, if you will, right? A little wavy, because maybe I don't want it to be perfect, and I can do something like that, okay? So I typically play with a little bit of this this waviness potentially just a little click okay i just made it a little bit distorted probably i want to get more control over that in fact let's undo that you ready for this i'm going to go to edit and i'm going to go into puppet warp puppet warp allows me to add these pins right in here so i can add these pins just like that and i can start to manipulate these so i can oops grab that pin and pull it out if I want to. But more importantly, right over here, and I will turn off that, maybe I wanna have this like distorted up, down, right, get kind of like, I'm gonna get really distorted right in here is what I'd want to do. But notice how I'm using the puppet warp to do that, okay? And again, I just wanna be really exact with that right up here, make it kind of crazy. Sometimes you could get pins too close to one another, but that's all I'm doing right there. You get the idea. Cool, cool, cool. There we are, Brazil. Taking down those, uh, that opacity or just kind of blurring it out a little bit more get the idea. So, wait. 
Cisco says, cool. Glad you like it. Clicking over. Thank you, Cisco, for joining me. And uh, yeah, um, other examples I can take a look at. We could see this text I did earlier, this one, uh, and even this one. This one actually got pretty complex. Um, obviously, it's the same thing where we have text with clipping masks. Okay, let me get rid of this. Here's that word sunshine, and guess what? The great uh, part about this is that all this is editable. Uh, the sun right there. And lastly, as I kind of wind up, for this text, it is a clipping mask. I can add a little bit of a bevel, just a little bit on the top, dealing with this yellow being the highlight on the top, like I said, and I can adjust the hardness of this. So that's all I'm doing is giving it a little bit of a bevel right in there, as you can see. Really delicate, just like that. I think it looks good. Oh, thank you, Valder. It could just as easily be 3D as well. So, and again, I know I already said that I was done. Um, but here's another case. This is Ecuador. Keto. Let's do this. Keto Ecuador. Typing this in. You ready for this? I don't do this a lot, but we can go into 3D and we can make a 3D extrusion from the selected layer. Made that extrusion. This is actually a 3D object that I can take, kind of rotate it around. You can see what's happening. Uh, and I can actually take that text and, or, or this flag and map it onto uh, that particular uh, shape. So I'm going to just take this. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go to the properties for this. There's front material. So many materials. Okay, so um, I could actually make this the colors of the flag, for instance. I'm actually going to change a couple of these just so I can tell what color it is. Okay, the sides. That is that, uh, that particular red color. What I can also do is add a new texture. You ready for this? 3D, what? Pasting this in. Stretching this out. Because I'm like, hey, I want it to kind of like have that mapped. There we go on the sides, as you can tell, right? And again, this is a 3D object. You could see kind of just get glimpses of that particular, uh, that flag right there for Keto. Cool. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. I'm glad you think it's amazing. Thank you, Christian, for hanging out with me. Feel free to hit share, like, uh, all that good stuff. But uh, I would say we've done quite a bit in our time today as you can see, everything from, and again, just to restart, simple task, text with layer masks, um, getting into some more details, adding some shadows, uh, adding just some layer effects on text, which you can do just to give it that nice bevel. And then we even did some 3D right down here. So we did quite a bit in a short amount of time. Hopefully you appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Josello. Guayaquil, Ecuador. Oh, it's from Guay Guayaquil? Oh, I'm so sorry. Oops. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry it was from a different place, but it's definitely in in Ecuador, right? Is that? Better be. Otherwise, I'm going to be like mad at myself. So either way, that's what you have. Uh, pretty straightforward what you could do with Photoshop. Uh, and uh, text, just remember, don't ever worry about rasterizing text. You don't really need to use clipping masks a lot. I'm sure you'll be super successful. So thank you so much for watching and hanging out. Joe Zello, you're a good man. 
uh, feel free to hit share and like and all that good stuff. And uh, feel free to hit me up on any of the social medias and I'd be happy to answer any of your questions further. Thanks so much for watching. Have a beautiful day. Thanks, everybody. See ya.